Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on synaptic mechanisms. In this video, what we're going to discuss is the fusion pore in a bit more detail and potentially what it actually is. Okay, so the fusion pore. So the structure of this video then, uh, what we'll do is we'll just have a reminder of what the fusion pore is. Then what we'll do is we'll discuss the core snare complex and uh, which snare proteins we believe are involved in the fusion pore. And then to conclude, we'll do an experiment where they changed the structure of the core snare complex and it uh, seemed to prevent the full fusion. Sorry, it seemed to prevent the formation of the fusion pore. So, firstly, what is the fusion pore? So, let's say we have our presynaptic membrane here. And we have a synaptic vesicle, which is docked at the presynaptic membrane, like so. We won't actually draw out the, all the machinery that docks it, but we'll just draw it like so. Okay, then when an action potential arrives in the axon terminal, it causes um, the promotion of the fusion of this synaptic vesicle with the plasma membrane. And what we believe happens is that firstly, what you form is a little tube between the synaptic vesicle and the presynaptic membrane. And this little tube, this is known as the fusion pore. And basically, the fusion pore seems to allow the movement of a little bit of the neurotransmitter from the synaptic vesicle into the plasma membrane. It also seems to allow for the merging of the two membranes. Okay, so the merging of the um, synaptic vesicle membrane into the plasma membrane there. So a little bit of the synaptic vesicle membrane seems to go into the plasma membrane. Okay, and we're going to see how this seems to be a little bit contradictory with our theory of what this fusion pore is. So um, what it seems to be is that this fusion pore is lipidic. However, there is another theory suggesting that it's to do with the um, snare protein. So we'll see this other theory. Okay, right. So, you seem to form this uh, thing called a fusion pore which connects the synaptic vesicle lumen with the extracellular space here. Okay, and then what can happen is you can go on to either full fusion where the whole synaptic vesicle then fuses with the plasma membrane and releases all of its neurotransmitter contents into uh, the synaptic cleft. So this is full fusion. Okay. Or you can go through what's known as the kiss and run process where you form the fusion pore. A little bit of synap uh, neurotransmitter moves out of the synaptic vesicle into the synaptic cleft. And then you close the fusion pore without going through full fusion. So effectively what happens is the synaptic vesicle kisses the plasma membrane, releases a tiny little spittle of neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft, and then closes, runs off. So this is the kiss and run fusion, as it's called. So kiss and run fusion. Okay, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this fusion pore in a little bit more detail. And one of the theories as to what the fusion pore is, and as I said, the problem with this theory is that um, we know that when the fusion pore forms, a little amounts of the lipid from the um, synaptic vesicle end up in the plasma membrane afterwards. Um, so indeed, if you go from through kiss and run fusion, a little bit of the lipid from the synaptic vesicle would have gone uh, when you go back to this closed state because it will now be in the plasma membrane. Okay. However, a theory of what the fusion pore is that it is is that it's made up of the transmembrane regions of two of the snare proteins. So let me just remind you of the core snare complex. So we won't draw all of the proteins involved in the docking machinery. We won't refer to, for instance, NSEC1 slash MUNK18, and we won't do complexin. Instead, we're just going to look at the core snare complex. So if this is our synaptic vesicle here, OK, and I'm going to um, now draw it like this. I move the plasma membrane. I've spun this picture around 90 degrees. Okay. So the formation of the core snare complex involves these snare proteins. Uh, so I'll just write that down. Snare proteins, uh, which stands for snap receptor proteins. That's where snare comes from. So this stands for snap receptor, or snap receptors, I suppose. Actually, it probably is snap receptor. Okay, proteins. Right, 
So, you can divide the snare proteins roughly into two groups in the case of synaptic vesicle fusion, or docking in this case. Um, you can divide them into the V-snares, which are those associated with the vesicle. Okay, so V stands for vesicular snares. And then you can divide them in also, the other group is the T-snares, which are stands for the target snare, so this stands for target, okay? And the V-snares or vesicular snares are those snare proteins which are within the membrane of the synaptic vesicle. And the T-snares or target snares are those snare proteins which are associated with the plasma membrane. Now, there is one V-snare, okay? And its name is a protein known as synaptobrevin 2. So this is synaptobrevin 2. And I think I'll colour it in in orange. Okay, so in orange here, this is synaptobrevin 2. Okay, and then there are two T-snares. One is known as SNAP25 and is here. Okay, and then the other is known as syntaxin 1. And I'll draw it here. And because I just can't resist, I'm going to have to draw the full structure of syntaxin 1. So here is the triple helix up here with nsec1 slash monk18 in. But we won't refer to the function of that right now. So when you form the snare complex, it will have this triple helix up here with nsec1 slash monk18 on. Monk18. Okay, right. So um, N uh, syntaxin 1 has these... Um, these two main portions. It's got its snare motif, which is the portion that's going to interact with synaptobrevin 2 and snap 25 here. And then up here, it's got this triple helix, which is bound to uh, this nsec1 slash monk18 protein. They're both uh, the same names. Oh, sorry, they're different names for the same protein. Okay, right. So there, up there is the uh, nsec1 slash monk18 protein. Right. So, the turquoise protein then was SNAP25. Now, basically what happens is all of these snare proteins, synaptobrevin2, SNAP25, syntaxin1, they all have alpha helices at this sort of level here where they're all interacting with one another. And these alpha helices will all intertwine with one another to form a complex, basically, which is called a core snare complex. So this is a core snare complex. And this is responsible for docking the plasma membrane, sorry, docking the synaptic vesicle at the plasma membrane. Now, you won't just form one of these core snare complexes. Instead, you'll form multiple. So here is another one drawn down here. Okay, so here is SNAP25, syntaxin one up here with its triple helix, and then again, a MUNK18 or NSEC1 protein bound to it up here. Right, so synaptobrevin2 is in orange again, here. Uh, SNAP25 is in turquoise, here, okay. Uh, syntaxin1 is in blue, here, and I've just realised I haven't labelled syntaxin1 up on before, so I'll label it here. So this is syntaxin1, okay. And finally, we then have nsec1 slash monk18 uh, bound to the triple helix of the syntaxin 1 protein up here. Right. Now, this is the complex structure which holds uh, this uh, synaptic vesicle at the plasma membrane, i.e. it's the structure involved in the docking process. However, we believe these same proteins may well be involved in forming the fusion pore when these two vesicles fuse together, but we'll continue this discussion in the next video.